It's day two of the Women's Champions Trophy, and we've just seen a very impressive Argentina performance, and now it's the turn of GB. They are hoping that they can cause a bit of a shock here. They're up against the best team in the world in the shape of the Netherlands Fresh from a 6-2 thrashing of New Zealand. Let's join our commentary team, and that is Ashley Williams, Ashley Morrison, and... Sarah Thompson. Or oh, is it Charlie Broom? Sorry, Charlie. Having opened their campaign against the reigning champions, trophy and hockey World League champions, Great Britain now face the hardest test in women's hockey as they face the Netherlands. The Dutch are the world number one side. They are the defending Olympic and world champions. And they open their 2016 Champions Trophy campaign with an impressive 6-2 demolition of the Black Sticks. So Britain started slowly against Argentina yesterday, but showed great character as they twice fought back from a goal down to secure a two-all draw. Ortiz being led out by the two umpires, Carolina de la Fuente of Argentina and Claire Adeno of France. And the Dutch in their change strip of all white, Great Britain in all red. And now the teams are out. We'll have the national anthems, first of the Netherlands and then of Great Britain. And please will you remain standing for the national anthem of Great Britain. These two have faced each other five times in the Champions Trophy over the years. The Dutch have won three, Great Britain won, and their last meeting ended in a two-all draw. That was in Rosario back in 2012, before the last Olympic Games. That said, Great Britain just won a two-match test series in Holland, and the last time they faced the Dutch here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre is England. They came from two goals down to win the European Championship on a shootout. So let's have a look at the two teams, starting with the Dutch. And, well, we know about Marjorie Palman and how lethal she is, not only from open play, but at the top of the circle, but that midfield of De Hoda, Belton and Van der Poels, who wins her 50th cap for the Dutch here this afternoon, is a very strong one as well. For Great Britain, well, Hinch was a bit nervy to start with yesterday, but then played much better as the game wore on. In fact, you could say that possibly about the rest of the side, but they finished it strongly against Argentina, and they'll be looking forward, relishing the chance of taking on the Dutch here today. Well, here are the substitutes bench, and, well, when you've got the lights of Herg, Van Marsacker, Dexter van der Hervel to call on, it's a strong bench, but then you've got Twig and Danson and Cullen starting for Great Britain. Head coaches Alison Annan and Danny Kerry. Oh, 
These two countries first did battle back in 1978. That was the first test match between Great Britain and the Netherlands in Amsterdam. The Dutch won that one by three goals to one. Can Great Britain keep up their recent good form against the all-conquering Dutch? And it is Lieder by Velten who gets us underway with the Dutch playing in the all-white strip with the blue socks attacking the goal to our left-hand side. Great Britain in all red, and I'm delighted to say alongside me in the commentary box is the bronze medalist from the London 2012 Games for Great Britain, Sarah Thomas. Sarah, we just wait for this ball to get played in and Sophie Bray gets it out. So your thoughts ahead of this one? Well, it most definitely going to be an exciting game today. I've, I've called a draw down there just purely on the basis that I think Danny Carey is very good tactically. He, he knows now how to work against the Netherlands. And I just think on the other side is the Netherlands' creativity. If, if the GB team can stop them from coming forward and stop the likes of Hogan, particularly for me, leader by Belton, then this game will end up being a bit of a draw. The one thing you can always be sure about the Dutch is they, they'll create a lot of chances. But what they don't always do is take them. And if they don't take them early on, they start to get a little bit nervous towards the end. And it's, it's all relative. But if you can keep within a goal, or even two, yeah. then there's always a chance. Yeah, exactly. And naturally for the for the Dutch that they used to now, they, over a long period of time, they've been world number one and that they used to win and they have that mentality. So anything that disrupts that, you know, the physicality or not going a goal up early, as you say, can really disrupt their performance. The ball over the top, Halman is going across with the holder. Okay. And Van Geffen with the sideline ball, rolls it into the holder. The holder with space to turn into and tries to feed Lieder by Velten and then gets the possession back and Velten brings that under control. Velten on the reverse stick, has a little look up. She's trying to see where Devard and Jonker are, but it's a swing and a miss. Van Ass. Good to steal by Holly Webb. Yeah, it's a great tackle from Holly Webb. I mean, she's, she's probably GB's best out-and-out -out tackler in the game now, and, and she reads the ball so, so well. And if she can just keep doing that against Naomi Van Ass and as I said, Belton, as they come through the centre of the field and saying, right, guys, we're shut up shop here. You're going to have to go around the outside of us and, and do more to create those opportunities. Well, here goes Van Geffen around the outside and uh, all play back inside. And there is White, but Jonker comes away with it. Jonker up against Ansley. And back there is Helen Richardson-Walsh to help out. And plays it to Kate Richardson-Walsh. Yeah, GB have no height at all at the moment. All their players within the defensive 50, they need to try and set up a bit better and try and stretch the Dutch midfield to try and create some space so they can really start attacking the, the Dutch midfield. Both teams actually a little guilty of that. For Kelly Jonker, when she picked yeah. the ball up, was the highest or well, the furthest forward for the Dutch, and she was, what, some 10, yeah. 10 15 metres inside her own half. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Uh, uh, Oh dear, that's a terrible ball and a chance here now for leader by Velton. You don't want to give her these too many chances. Velton is such a skillful player. Hinch comes and Velton is penalised for shielding the ball with a stick. Well, a real let off for Great Britain and Hinch with a much better start. Yeah, really lucky. Anthony there gone from the aerial ball and it's not come off, but Velton ready to poach and uses a body there to get past Sam Quek, as you see. Maddie Hinch just doing enough and and as the umpire said, leader by Velton put a stick over the ball, so the goalkeeper's not able to get it clearly. It's Caroline de la Fuente who is blowing the whistle to the left-hand side of screen on the far side of the pitch. Claire Adenau of France on the near side. Here is Van Geffen. And Van Mahler tries to keep it in. Nope. Just rolls off the back of the park. I guess what's interesting for me, Charlie, is, is how GB start in the midfield. And uh, I think that goes back to me being a midfield player and really conscious of that. But I know Danny Carey will be encouraging the girls from GB to just play the usual game, you know, go forward and attack and take the chances. And what we often see when they play the Netherlands is they start to become quite cautious. So they start to receive the ball in midfield and rather than open up and move forward, they start playing the ball backwards, giving them no momentum. And that's really a frustration for players just saying, look, pick up the ball and go forward just as you would against any other team. Don't fear them. 
So were you, was it you or was that Mel saying that the, the first thing is back, pass back when you yeah, face the Dutch rather than turning and going, yeah. 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 Twig drops it to Townsend. Townsend off against uh, Capels. I mean, it's not always down to the GB players doing that on purpose, you know, the, the Dutch do extremely well in terms of putting you under pressure in the midfield, but it's up to you as, as a forward midfield or even a defender in those positions when you find yourself there to just open up and try and play forward, try and go to goal. Brandon Hervel. Feeding the ball up the line to Van Geffen. There's no one in the centre of the park for the Dutch, so Van Geffen has to go by herself and McLeod makes the tackle, but then gifts the ball back to the Dutch. Van Geffen still going. Van Geffen into... Dirks it under her vault and onto the feet of the English defence and it's penalty corner number one, five and a half minutes into the game. Really good work there from Van Keffen though, getting down the right hand side. I mean, it's the second, third time she's already overlapped the midfield player coming from a defensive position and as you can see there, Dirks van der Howe just getting the foot of Georgie Twig to get that first corner of the game. But it's one of those things, you, you make the tackle, like Hannah McLeod did there, you then got to keep control of the ball, you can't gift it back to them. Yeah, exactly, you've got to try and win it cleanly, and as difficult as it may be, you don't want it dropping out, because you can guarantee the next player onto it will be a, a Dutch one. So it's Marci Powerman, number 17, 24 is over to Hoda. And it goes to Powerman, who goes high, and Hinch with the stick, tips it over. Wonderful save from Matty Hinch, the crowd liked it. Yeah, a great save, I mean, Palman's got hold of this one. That's an absolutely fantastic save from Maddie Hinch. I mean, she looks pretty casual about that, but, you know, great save off a stick to take that ball over the bar. Well, we saw Palman yesterday as the error comes from Schoenacker. We saw Palman yesterday score uh, top left, top right, bottom left. Oh, yeah, she can do absolutely can. everything. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I wouldn't want to be standing on the line as a goalkeeper because you just wouldn't have a clue which way she goes. And she holds on to the ball for quite some time, which stops you then from knowing early on where she is going. Hinch had set up to the right of her goal. Letting the runners cover the left-hand side. Quick has to stretch and Jonker dispossesses her. Dirks of Anden Hervel. To Hoda. Rolls it in field and Richardson Walsh. And Richardson Walsh can't quite get there. Here's the score. The score still going. Lovely little stick work from the score. And Hitch comes out to make the save, but you've seen already twice some great individual skill from the Dutch. Yeah, really good. Look at this turn from Vashaw. I mean, perfect. And Susie Townsend goes to take the intercept, misses it, and Vashaw's behind there, lurking in, ready to get straight into the circle. Belton. Oh. Just ghost between two GB defenders. Hoda has it, she'll roll it out to Villamine Boss over Marsaka. Herg up against McLeod. Into the score. Hunsworth is there, rolled off the back of the park. And, uh, and out for GB. That's the beauty of the Netherlands, though. They've got, you know, natural talent on both the right and the left side of the field. Uh, Lieder by Velten and Ellen Holcomb are naturally more suited to the left side of the field. I mean, Lieder by Velten in the last couple of years has started to attack a lot more to the right as well, but naturally on the left-hand side, which the women's game didn't actually have, the, the backhand pass, the backhand shot has changed the game dramatically in that aspect. Danny Kerry, looking the style from his usual viewpoint here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. In fact, he, he always sort of sits up in the stand, doesn't he, and watches it from on high to try and see the angles. Yeah, so in Beijing, he was he was on pitch side, but, I mean, I think it was a move for him to, to realise, you know, I've done my job now, it's up to the girls to go on the pitch and, and play their game. I don't have to architect anything further. I can go up, I can get a good view and see what's happening. 16, as it's run over the back by Cadles. Twig. Uh, 
gives the possession away to Van der Pols and Marla. Good tackle by Krista Cullen. And then she plays it into over the herd of stick and the Dutch have possession back. Yeah, GB, as you said, Charlie, winning that first tackle, but just need to be a little bit more composed than ensuring that it's, you know, they're playing it to their teammate and not giving it immediately back to the Dutch. White. Hansley. Owsley. Callan to her right, so is uh, Richardson Walsh. Plays it forward to McLeod. Lovely little touch from McLeod, and Owsley through! And on to the bar off Joyce Sombrook. Sombrook came, Owsley got the shot away, but the Dutch keeper did enough just. Yeah, a good ball from Kate Richardson Walsh, doesn't play it to the outside, tries to find Hannah McLeod, and a little bit of luck there, but a nice little touch from Owsley. But look at that great lift, has evaded the goalkeeper just for the crossbar. And that would have been in. But that's good, that's really good from GB, looking to go forward, looking to attack the Dutch. So Sombra not getting a touch. Marsley just getting under it. A little bit too much. Great work from Marsley, they're moving at pace, goalkeeper's coming out, you really don't have as much space as we, we see uh, from up here in the commentary box and does extremely well to get a lift moving at that speed. Van Ass, lovely skill from Van Ass. Driving to the circle edge off the foot of uh, Webb. And that's to Devard. And that's again. And again, good play from Holly Webb. Hansley. That's Devard. And it is a. GB 16, let's hear from the GB bench. Craig, great pace to this game. Keep hearing you shouting, keep the ball going forward, don't be afraid of them, keep running. Yeah, that's our motto, really. We're just going to play forward and we're going to have a go today. Great opportunity there by Lily Owsley. Yeah, fantastic. Unfortunately, just a little high, unfortunately. Keep it going. Cheers, thank you. Helen Richardson Walsh wins the free hit, takes it herself and drives forward up against Jackie Schernacker. And Vanas wins the free hit. Schernacker. And Marsaka to Powman, and that's good hunting by Lily Owsley. Owsley, it's a three-on-three -three situation here. Owsley cuts back inside and uh, hits the foot of Powman, wins the free hit. Now, if Great Britain can take this quickly, they've still got the element of surprise, but it's been lost around the corner from Owsley, who's enjoying taking on the Dutch attack. Cross it comes, and Sombrook has to make the save with Danson in front of her. Really good attacking stuff from Great Britain. Cullen, and she can't keep it under control, and the pressure is released. Yeah, great work here from Lily Owsley, driving that baseline, but look at that for a cross. It's perfect, you know, nice and hard and flat. Alex Danson just trying to jump in behind Powman there to try and get a, a little touch on that. Powman hooks it, and it's the GB ball, which Unsworth will take. That's what we were talking about at the start, though, Charlie, in terms of, you know, how to unsettle the Dutch, and certainly unsettling Powman and certainly unsettles the Dutch, so really good work from Lily Owsley, high pressing her and winning that ball off her. Well, Holly Webb taking on Van Ass, and almost getting the better of it, but now a chance for the Dutch, and here is Jonker, no, because Ansley gets the stick in. The Vard. That's Helen Herg, excuse me, down that right-hand flank for the Dutch. Still Herg, rolling into the score. Quack is there. Quack up against Maria Vescor. GB doing well to push the Dutch into that right-hand side corner, not allowing them to cut through the centre of the field, which is when the Dutch caused some real damage. So really good work getting in twos and threes out there, GB, to condense that space. Final 90 seconds then of the first quarter, still no score. Netherlands nil, Great Britain nil. Just the one penalty corner, which uh, Maddie Hinch put over the bar. 
Great Britain have come closest because they hit the bar. But here comes Herg. Herg rolling it forward to Jonka. And Hansley wins the free hit. Dancer, which is up against four players in white. She cuts back inside and tries to feed Sophie Bray. Bray loses out to Herg, and here is Dehoda. Dehoda to Dexter van den Hervel. Free hit to the Dutch. Daniel de la Fuente wants stopped. Too high. Oh, just 15 seconds left. Your th thoughts quickly, Tom? I think GB have done well in terms of going forward. I think the Dutch are being forced on that right hand side a bit at the moment, and it'll be better for them if they can attack the left in the second quarter as well. Well, there is the quarter time hooter, and it's been a good start by Great Britain. To all intents and purposes, they've kept the Dutch pretty quiet. Maddie Hinch has made two or three saves, one very good one from a penalty corner. The closest that Great Britain have come is hitting the bar. Lily Owsley there almost beating Joyce Sombrook. But at quarter time, the scoreline reads Netherlands nil, Great Britain nil. So as Danny Kerry goes to work, let's have a look at this chance again. But it, nice touch from McLeod and good running by Owsley. Yeah, really good ball through, and Owsley's trying to just get on top of it. But look at this. I mean, the goalkeeper's coming hard. She hasn't got an awful lot of space from that point of view. As a player, you, you can't see much, but she's gone for the lift, which is the right option at that time. There's not a lot else she can do. And then it's just a little bit too high into the crossbar. Really good to get that lift up. A little bit lucky at the top of the circle to, to get that in there, but when she's in there, she does extremely well. So what do you think Danny will be asking from his team in this second quarter? I, I think I genuinely think he'd be relatively pleased with, with how they've started the game. As we said, they, they have gone forward, uh, the tactic of Giselle Ansley putting the aerial ball over and Alex Danson or whoever is on the field as a forward is leading perfectly out into that space. But now they just need to get more people around the ball high up the field so they can really attack in numbers. OK, let's go down pitch side and hear from the Dutch bench. So, Naomi Van Ass, it's a really tight first quarter there. How are you going out to play in the second one? I think we started out uh, quite well. We had a lot of position of the ball, and I think we're going to give it some extra percent uh, the second quarter. The GB no. were forcing you down the right flank there. Will you be looking to go left? Uh, I think we're, we're going wherever it feels right <laughs> and where the openings are. <laughs> yeah, time. thank you. Nice. So, the Dutch get this second quarter underway. Still nothing between these two sides. Netherlands nil, no, Great Britain nil. No. Here is Powman to the score. The score turns it round the corner to Velton, and Velton wins the free hit. Unsworth has to get out of the way. Here goes Velton, and Quek getting down nice and low and making the tackle. The score thinks it's a Dutch ball, but Caroline de la Fuente has given it to Great Britain. Tidy obstruction, the reason for the Dutch free hit and Jonker into the circle. Jonker still going, lifts it over Hinch, but Unsworth is there to stop the danger temporarily. It's in front of the goal and Hinch makes another save, but it's a penalty corner. Great Britain living dangerously, it's been given for a foot. Townsend conferring. Yeah, lift from Kelly Jonker into the circle, which is really difficult then for a defender to deal with, but. Michelle van der Poel, so I think, is the one getting on it there, and as it comes in, you can see. Alison Allen thought it was close, but you know, onto the foot of Townsend now. It is the Hoda and Powman at the top, Van Marla to inject. Van Heffen to stop for Powman on the left castle. Jonker will be stopping on the right castle if it goes to the Hoda. 
No surprise. Oh, it does. It does go to Yehuda. They look for the slip. And it's been turned in on the far post by Lida by Belton. And the Dutch run a variation at the penalty corner. And Lida by Belton deflects in on the far post. It's the Netherlands one. Great Britain nil. Yeah, great variation there from the Netherlands at the top. You can see De Huda putting that in, and Lida by Belton is quite far out from the goal as she makes contact with that. You can see her trying to get her foot out of the way, but stick is low on the ground. palman has gone in, and we know now that the Netherlands also have a variation where Palman goes in, so they look like a real threat in there, which GB went to. Well, barely a minute on the scoreboard on the clock in this second quarter, and the Dutch are in front. All that hard work. Well, they've gone down the other end and won a penalty corner, so the Dutch league could be very short-lived. 12 seconds from the restart to this penalty corner. Sophie Bray doing well. They're trying to get the ball in the air and cause trouble, and Van Heffen just going to ground. First penalty corner of the competition. They didn't get any yesterday. Be interesting to see what option they go for, but this is what he was given for. Van Heffen's gone to ground and pushed that ball off the baseline, which the umpires deemed to be purposeful. Hansley is number 18. 11 is the captain, Kate Richardson Walsh. Sophie Gray stopping on the left castle. Holly Webb on the right. Dancing to inject. Injection comes to Ansley, who strikes. And the save is made. And a twig actually injecting the ball there, but it's a good save by Sombrook. Yeah, as you see, it goes to the top. Good variation. Bray running through, but. Ansley just going for the hit and it's straight down the middle. Good pressure from Lida Vivelton as the number one runner to get at the top of the circle so quickly. Quack to Bray. Bray keeps it in up against the score long corner. Belton gets a touch and it drops to Van Marla. In the corner from Danson to Bray. 16. Belton with the upright reverse stick pass under her shoulder to the score. A lovely piece of skill. Belton for me is so, so good. I mean, she just glides past players sometimes, but you can see, you know, she changes the angle of attack. She, even if it's only slight, she always goes in to come out or vice versa, and that really fools the defender. Quack does well. Deflects kindly for Great Britain to Bray, but she's given the ball back. And never mind, boss. Going to have some pressure from Hannah McLeod. It is only Hannah McLeod, so once Boss beats her, it's fairly easier for her to play the pass. The score back inside to De Hoda. De Hoda fires it forward. Webb on the top of the D blocks for Great Britain, but De Hoda has possession back. Yeah, De Hoda had the Cadles in acres of space out there on the right hand side, then just trying to force the ball through the centre. Here goes Van Ass. Van Ass into the circle. It's an important touch in there in the middle of the circle by McCallan. Ball forward by Webb to McLeod and never mind boss snuffing at the heels of McLeod. But here goes Owsley again. This time Powman makes the tackle. Van Ass slips it. Inside and Schoenacker drops it out. And then her to Cakles. And wins the free hit off Sam Quack. And Xander Vard. Cullen. Richardson Walsh. Got no outlet pass, Helen Richardson Walsh. And as a result, Great Britain are forced into a pass that turns possession over. Holly Webb back again. She's having a good game, the Great Britain number 20. Yeah, and you can see with GB there, trying to get the numbers to protect the centre of the field, and 
And in doing so, when they win back the ball, there isn't, as you say, any outlet. Particularly, there's no stretch on the game, so there's no space in which to attack for the midfield players. Van Ass cuts in field. Van Ass still going. Harsley hangs a stick in. Free hit to the Netherlands. And Vermala can't keep it in play. Oh, got a touch off a GB stick. It's a long corner. Red chip that Marsak is going to take. Villamine boss. And Marsaka looks up. There she is again. I think Holly Webb has been given the hotline yeah. goal today. <laughs> Stay in the line from the ball to the goal and uh, intercepting. She's doing that extremely well. But the Dutch starting to play the ball around a little bit more now. But look, to me, like really cool and calm and composed at the moment. And Berg wanted the free hit. Nothing coming. Sideline ball. Great Britain, which Quick is going to take. No, nope, she's not. She's going to leave it to Kate Richardson Walsh. So Alex Danson's just come on and provided a little bit of stretch, but again, that's a, a key factor for the, the British team here. They need to start, and start stretching the game, getting players higher because they're just playing into congestion all the time. And we know how good the Dutch are in those spaces of closing people down and winning ball back. Van Geffen rolls it all the way across to the skipper. Sandevard wins a sideline ball. And the Dutch, well, they, they're shading possession now. Great Britain have been shading it until this point, but uh, they've really bossed the ball, haven't they? Yeah, they have. They, they, they have. They've had a lot of the possession, the, the Dutch side. But for me, there's not the usual tempo that we see from them. The you know the midfield are the catalyst in terms of creating opportunities, and you can see them trying to link quite a lot, which is naturally what they want to do. They want the ball rather than players to do the work. But the outcome at the end isn't quite to the level you would expect from the Dutch side at the moment. Someone's not happy, he's getting the card. No, who's going uh, to sit down? It's uh, David Ahuda. He's got the green card. Lots of people running off, and rolling subs, but it's Ahuda who takes her place on the naughty step. There she is. Naturally, now the Dutch have stepped off into a half-court press, meaning that their players are behind the ball, given that they're a player down. But this is where GB really need to capitalise now and utilise the extra player they have on the field. Takes it up into the crowd, and Effin apologises, has time to apologise to the crowd for... <laughs> Endangering their heads, but it was well taken actually in the crowd. Good catch. She's just waved at the crowd once again to apologise, Van Geffen, on the right of your screen. And same moment, similar moment earlier where we saw Kate Richardson and Walsh go for the inside ball, so much more direct ball towards the circle rather there than Kristen Cullen putting it out towards the sideline. Very smart hat. Van der Pols, Van Geffen. And last second. Kittles wins the free hit. And Richardson Walsh. Oh, Sander Vard. Penalised for not giving Richardson Walsh the space. Dancing cuts in field, looking for the outlet ball, trying to find Bray, but the score stretches and just does enough. Yeah, great interception there from Bushko. I mean, a Dutch forward back then and just timing it perfectly to get that. Otherwise, GB would have been in on, on goal. Van der Poles, Solly Webb once again. Dancing 
Powers the outsider. Nothing to the right of Danson at all. So she's going to have to spin back round. Unsworth was also available in the middle of the park. But she picked out to Cullen, who goes to Kate Richardson Walsh. To Zell Ansley. Susie Townsend. Laura Unsworth. Slap forward to the head of the circle. Danson gets uh, one of those. Actually, off Palman. And it's a long corner just to the side of the goal, which Townsend will take to Richardson Walsh into the corner to Giselle Ansley. Ansley to Webb, who now has to get her attacking hat on. Better, though, from GB there. I mean, you've got Ansley on the left side of the field and Ansley on the right side, nice and high, so starting to stretch, starting to stretch the Dutch and try and get into the circle, but... Four and a half remaining in the first half. Cullen under some pressure from Yonker. And Cullen does well. Bray. To Danson. And oh, Palman couldn't keep it in play. One of those frustrating ones for the Dutch captain. So Cullen, Hansley, first time sweeping it into the circle. Powerman gets her stick on it and then rifles it into McLeod and it's uh, free out to the Dutch. Sideline ball for Great Britain. Right. Back here is Unsworth. Cullen. Hansley. Quack. So Unsworth. Game of chess, this one really isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly what I was thinking. It really does feel like that, and and that's why I said at the start, is, you know, in terms of the tactics, GB do extremely well in getting the tactics right against the Dutch, but it just feels like it needs some tempo, it needs some intensity, and I don't think we're going to get that before the half time now. Number four, Kitty Van Mala. Green card. Second green card of the game for the Dutch, but Veltons no, can't bring that one under control. Very keen and Keegan, sorry, screaming at his players to try and move forward. And there he is with Karen Brown just to the left, looking down. The pressure applied. The Dutch are down to 10. Catel swells it out to Powman. Hannah McLeod closing down Villamine Boss as well. Gets the stick in. They put it out of play. Inside the final two minutes of the first half. Still Netherlands 1. Great Britain 0. Goal coming right at the start of this quarter. You could hear the Dutch then just call in again to, to half court press, get numbers behind the ball, and just see this out into the half time. Happy with their 1 0 lead. Forward from Van Ass to Dirksen van den Hervel, and she gives away the free hit, which is taken quickly. White, good tackle from Schoenacker. Local penetrations were 5 3 in favour of the Dutch. Possession in favour of the Dutch. Quack. To Helen Richardson Walsh, who loses out 
Van Geffen. And the tackle from Georgie Twig. And once again, having got the ball back, they then gift it back to the Dutch. Yeah, that, and that's, that's something they'll have to improve on in the second half. Keep in possession once they've worked so hard to win it back. Play it to your teammate. Here's Van Marle, who's back on, having been on the bench. And Devard can't get any power in the shot. Great. And the touch, it's a Dutch ball, which Boss will take. Bray's kicked the ball away, so that will be that. And, um, well, Great Britain will go into the half-time break trailing, and they've got a lot of work to do. Just the one real threat on Joyce Sombrook's goal in the first 30 minutes. But the world number one side, the defending Olympic champions, the defending world champions are in front here. At half-time, it's Netherlands 1, Great Britain 0. Danny, your thoughts on that first half? Um, Trying to do what we're trying to do, just getting a little bit uh, not diligent enough in possession, turning over cheaply, then we have to defend for long spells. But otherwise, we're well in the game. Holland will tire now and we'll come good in the second half. It seems to be a bit of a chess match. Is, there, is it about holding possession for the GB side? Yeah, definitely. The person on the ball has to do more to make sure it gets to the uh, receiver. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, Danny Carey, uh, um, desperate to get down to his players at half time. It's a pretty tight affair. GB looking so good, but yet again, that goal machine that is the Netherlands lead by a goal to nil. Well, this was always going to be a tight and nervy affair. The Netherlands against uh, Team GB. GB having their best chance of the opening exchanges, but it's the Netherlands who lead by a goal to nil. It just shows you how tight it's been and how it's been dominated by, I suppose, the midfield. Uh, Netherlands lead by a goal to nil. Four shots to two, but look at that. Circle penetrations, just the nine between the two sides in uh, half of a match. 52% uh, possession for the Netherlands. That really did pick up in the second quarter there. One penalty corner to two penalty corners for the Netherlands. This is the second game of three. Already we've had uh, Argentina hammer United States by four goals to one. And at four o'clock, it's Australia against New Zealand. Well, Marsha, and Mel are with me. That was, it was a good first half. Let's took it out of the British side. Um, so much promise, yet they're a goal down. Yeah, I, I felt they started the game really, really well. Um, we had the opportunity with Lily Owsley where she hit the crossbar. But the biggest thing for me, which we could hear Sarah Thomas saying in the commentary, was just we need to get stretch on the game. And I just feel that because the strikers are probably not getting the ball as much as they want it to, they're creating their own press. And at times we've got our 11 players in 40, 50 metres of the pitch rather than stretching it away and, and creating pockets of space for the likes of Susanna Townsend, Georgie Twig, Shona McCallan to actually play and show what they can do on the ball. Yeah, despite all of the, you know, the huff and the puff, very few chances. Holland always seen Netherlands feet felt comfortable didn't they? Yeah, I think that they've just kept their composure really well. I think last summer where they they were ahead and then ended up losing that really important final that we keep going on about. Um, I think that that has been a learning curve for them, that they need to just stay composed and absorb the pressure that GB put on them. GB are running great defensive lines. They've, they're doing exactly what we discussed before the game, physical in every single challenge. And the Netherlands just need to stay composed so that they, they can free their minds and free themselves up to play the game that they want to play. Yeah, just when GB looked as if they were comfortable and looked like the, the stronger side, the Netherlands took the lead. They did, and it was a well-worked penalty corner um, from Ludovine Velten on the, on, the, on the drag flick. But I think it was something that Marsha alluded to, to yesterday was because Marcia Palman scored so many goals yesterday and was a threat from the top, GB obviously see that, want to, they've done their homework, they think it's, that's where they need to put the, air, the, the pressure. And actually it's Ava de Hoda who actually delivers the, the pass. So Marcia Palman becomes this distraction that everybody's keeping their eyes on. Where's she going? What's she going to do? 
And it shows the quality and the depth that the Dutch have in their corner routine. Yeah, and you can't just run at uh, the Powerman when you're looking at elsewhere. Um, look, uh, GB did have their chances, a brilliant piece of skill, um, and she probably got a little bit too much on the little dink over the goalkeeper in the end here, Marsha. Yeah, I think that Lily Alsi has had a good first half in this game, and it would have been nice to see her put that put that away, not only for for GB, but also for all the efforts that she's she's making out there on the field today. Yeah, and you, and you would have said, if they could have converted any of these chances, we would have seen the Dutch under pressure, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you saw from, from Lily Owes' opportunity there that, that actually it was a great post up by Hannah McLeod with the, the one-touch layoff to, to Lily, and it actually, I think, showed that the Dutch probably aren't the, some of the best defenders in the world. They look vulnerable back there, and, and that's why I want to see Great Britain playing with a lot more stretch and putting that back line, which is what they did to Argentina yesterday, under pressure. Win the ball higher up the field, so you're not having to use so much energy sprinting 60, 70 metres up the pitch to get the ball into the circle. Yeah, it became very, very uh, narrow, didn't it? And you can see by the circle penetrations, neither team really getting into a dominating position, right? No, and I think that, uh, yeah, I just hope to see a more exciting second half in that, that regard, as you say. But I'd also like to see more penalty corners because that does create that excitement, yeah. seeing what, what both teams have to offer. Well, talking of excitement, we did, we said, whatever you do, do not give a penalty corner over too early uh, because Palman we know is so dangerous. But we had a spectacular save, didn't we? So nonchalant. It, it, it's absolutely fantastic. And it, it, it's something that, that Maddie Hinch is absolutely exceptional at not just internationally, but for a club side Holcomb as well. And it's, you know, she takes one step to her right and you can see Palman's probably put as much effort into that penalty corner flick as she can. Maddie's taken one step and almost said, don't put that ball on my goal. Yeah. Yeah. We've got exceptional strikers and attacking midfielders on the field from both teams, but actually we've got the two best goalkeepers in the world currently on the field, and I think that that is going to be the biggest difference on the result, yeah. on the end result today. Well, the players are out there. They're just about ready to go. You see some light for GB then, Mel, quickly? Yeah, I do, definitely. Why not? You know, they're only one goal down. They're still in the game. I think the next goal will be vital. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Marsha. Let's join our commentary team now. Uh, it's only a goal difference, uh, Charlie Broom, but against the Dutch, uh, it is a massive goal, isn't it? It is indeed a very big goal, but as we mentioned before, the Dutch will create chances, they won't always score, and if you can nick one to level it up or get back to within a goal, then they start to feel a little nervous. But to do that, Great Britain have got to get shots away, and just two in the first 30 minutes is never going to be enough to beat the Dutch. Well, we're just about ready to get this second half underway. Great Britain will be attacking the goal to our left-hand side, and it is Alex Danson that gets the ball rolling for Great Britain. And immediately, they've gifted possession back to the Dutch. And here goes Kitty Van Mala. And she's given away the free hit. Richardson Walsh will take into Laura Unsworth and already the Dutch are starting to press Great Britain. Dutch picking up two green cards in that second quarter. Battling for it is Belton. Over to Hurda. Actually out to Willemine Boster van Geffen. the poles here is Jonker still going Jonker Jonker gets it strong and then is blown up by Claire Adno some alarm bells there for Great Britain yeah, great work from Jonker she drives in I mean some great skill on show even though the umpires blown it against her I mean great driving at players at speed at pace and changing the angle I, I personally didn't see anything wrong with that but I think she was saying she was uh, protecting the ball with her stick and not allowing the Van defender Paul, to... Sorry, to jump in, cracks it across, and Yonka can't bring it under control. Webb is there once again, and that's just an aimless smack up the park from McCallan. She's going to get another chance with it, though, but she's given it away. Yeah, and it's those kind of errors that are really frustrating, uh, you know, for the players on the field and the coach as well. It's like, keep possession. It's to Danny's point earlier before half-time, the girls at GB are doing well. Powman 
Tries to slide it in. Ed Unsworth is there. Doing well to try and get the initial ball, make the interception, but when they do, they just need that little bit more composure to play it to their teammate and make sure it goes to a red shirt. Well, Van Geffen has won that one against McLeod, so Claire no, being consistent. Oh, Yonka. Well, obviously hit her on the stick, but it was pretty close to hitting the body. That's a nice touch from McCann, that's better. Her effort a minute ago was pretty aimless, but that had purpose to it. Yeah, that's much better. And also GB trying to get a bit more stretch on the game. We saw that Alex Danson and Lily Owsley were much higher up the field then, which is creating that space. And we keep talking about it, but that's going to be the key to unlocking the Dutch defence. You have to create the space in which you can attack them at. They can't cover every option then. Palmer. Maybe the herder. Maybe the herder spins away from Webb and the herder. Oh, just behind Zander Vard. Vard would have been in otherwise. Yeah, the Dutch looking really patient as well in their build up, you know, and when they choose to go, they're really going, but not with the same intensity with everyone that you normally see from them. Driving run from De Hoda into Zander Vard. De Vard trying to get it onto the reverse stick, but Quek is there to bring the ball away. Slips it back in field to Townsend, back to Quek, who just jabs at the ball and the Dutch have possession once again. Palman first time, trying to inject some pace, but Townsend steps in front. Townsend to the right-hand side where Alan Richardson Walsh against Schernacker, and Schernacker wins the ball, Schernacker, Devard, Palman. Palman given time to find the pass, and then it's a little slide pass into the midfield, and Ellen Herg and Herg to Van Ass into Dirk to Van der Hervel, and Townsend is there. McCallan, Townsend. Unsworth, and a free hit. Townsend. Murphy goes up and over. Nice ball. And Sophie Bray plays it down the line to Danson. But making the tackle is Boss. Here goes Danson, still going Danson. That was a good example of GB using the congestion to their advantage. So they've got the Dutch in into the circle, into the centre, sorry, and then played it out, and Giselle Ansley has seen the space on the other side to fly that ball over and, and capitalise on the space that's left behind the Dutch. Gets hold of the aerial on that occasion. Good nick there from Twig. Twig driving to the second edge, onto the foot of Villamine boss, and Georgie Twig with a little bit of a spark to ignite the Great Britain attack. A second penalty corner for the team in red. Yeah, really good tw from Twiggy there. Nice, great pick on the reverse. I mean, not easy to do, but that is what's brilliant there from Twig. I mean, there's a small amount of space to get through those two Dutch defenders, but she just keeps driving. She just keeps driving and thinking, I'm going for this and into the circle. And as a result, she's got a corner for her team. Which she will inject. Cullen to the left, Ansley to the right. Worth stopping for Cullen, white for Ansley. Out it comes, it goes to Cullen who gets it on target, but Sombrick gets the right pad there and deflects it away. Ball goes out to Krista Cullen from the top. You can see from this angle she's going 
bottom left as you look at the goal, bottom right from the goalkeeper. And Sombrook, as she's going down, just managed to get a touch on it on her pad, but weight falling backwards as she as she gets that ball. Good work from Sophie Bray. She's running to Cullen. Play on, says Carolina La Fuente. And Xander Vard brings it away and gives it to Naomi Van Ass. Van Ass. To, to, and then her twig gets on the stick on it. There's a, oh, there's a big debate here. I the left. Fuente is pointing to a Dutch ball. Can't I don't know, I think maybe it was pointing for a GB ball. It's a Dutch ball, it's fired in. And Maddie Hinch watches it over the back line. Kate Richardson Walsh, I think, has picked up a green card, has she? She has. Yeah, I think it was just for that tackle. As they were in. forward then. Sorry, as it's clear. Oh, Ansley onto the stick of Van Ass. Oof. That was a nervous moment for the Great Britain defence. Ball coming in from Palman. Really good work from Krista Cullen there to step in front of Jonker. Jonker's always looking to, to get in behind, get a little touch, something on goal. So great work from Krista Cullen and Ansley then just, just doing enough to, to clear that and get it onto the foot. If you with us last week for the men's competition when Great Britain played Belgium in their final full match. Thomas Briel scored a very early goal, exactly like that, just stepping in front of the defender and getting the deflection past the keeper. George Bin had absolutely no chance, and the ball's played in the pace and you get a deflection. The keeper, unless it hits them, yeah. is never going to save it. Absolutely, it's just the timing of it. It's the connection between the defender putting the ball in and just seeing that the eyes just connecting and just getting the jump on it. And when you do, as you say, it's super effective because just the pace of the ball is to your advantage. McCallan. Callan and Cullen, something's going on there in the attacking line. <laughs> yeah, it's not often you see Krista Cullen in that Palmer's space. Palmer's played it away, she's going to get a card. She won't enjoy that. So the two skippers are on the naughty step. <laughs> a third green card in the game for the Dutch and Webb. Can't find Unsworth. Kate Richardson Wilson, gently. That's the first card Great Britain have picked up in this competition. The score. Yeah, but Shaw's just popped back out to be one of the back three at the minute to to equalise. Given that the Marcha Powerman's gone off, they need someone in the back line there for them, but. Keeping the two screens inside, not prepared to go to a back four, the Dutch side at the moment. Never heard it. The Hoda, Belton. Okay, Richard Morsh is back on the park. Belton can't get past Unsworth. And a tumbling leader by Velton wins the free hit. This war. White wins the free hit. I think Allison Allen will be. Uh, well, what do you think she'll be feeling right now? I think she'll be a little bit frustrated. I mean, she'll be happy with the, the amount of possession her team have had. But for me, they've not been as clinical as they can be in the circle. You've seen Van Ass driving the right baseline and uh, the right sideline, sorry, and putting early balls in. But, but more often than not, you see them trying to go a lot harder to the baseline, just holding on to it a little bit longer and getting their head up to pick out the, the final pass. It's been a little bit rushed today as they've played that ball into the circle. Palman's coming back on now. She's just stepped onto the park, so we're back up to full strength uh, both sides.
Cross, got half a touch from Bray and White into inside to Quack. To McCallan. McCallan still going, Shona McCallan does well. She's got support on this left hand side in Webb. Here is Holly Webb. Little look up from Webb, feeds it back to McCallan who can't keep it under control. Boss finds Van Marla. Van Marla is the furthest player forward in White. The score. Van Marla in front of her, lead by Velton's made tracks, and Van Marla has possession. Now, can she find the cross? Back inside. Well, it was far too far in front of her. She can't seriously think Claire Adno would have thought that she had control of that. It was about five metres in front of her. Yeah, and great work from Van Marla and Vashore to get to that point. Really good teamwork in playing 2v1 the whole time. But as I said, normally when they get into those positions, they're a lot more clinical. They just hold on to it a little bit more, a bit more composed and pick out the player. In that moment, as you say, she's just throwing it back in and it was quite far out of her reach. Schoenacker, oh, that's up off Webb. That's going to be a penalty corner. It was just inside, wasn't it? Yep. Lucky from Holly Webb. Such a good game thus far. Um, and just behind Dakota from that angle, but she's there she is. In it comes, and it goes to Dakota. This time she goes straight off the target, and Maddie Hinch, perfect balance, just stuck the right leg out and popped straight back up onto the balls of her feet. But that is how you stop a shot as a goalkeeper. Yeah, really, really good work. I mean, Tuchuda gets hold of that at the top and he's going quite low. I think for scores going in there for the deflection, but a great stretch there from Maddie Hinch and just goes to show that GB are really good at penalty corner defence. But just the difference there from the way yeah. Hinch saved Sombrook. it to the way Sombrook yeah. earlier on. Absolutely. Sombrook falling backwards as she was going down towards the ground. It's a lot easier said than done. It's, it's against human nature to force yourself forward into the shot. But that's what you have to do. And bizarrely, you actually get a further stretch if you put yes. your weight forward than if you lean back. And Herg wins a free hit. Good defending from the Great Britain captain. Yeah, we've seen a lot during this game so far, though, that the, the Dutch team are attacking down the right-hand side. We, we normally see they have a lot more attack down the left as well. And Marlow up against Cullen. Here's McCallan. Owsley. He hasn't seen much of the ball in an attacking sense since that effort in the first half. Danson also putting in the hard yards, but not really getting involved in the game as much. And that reflects how dominant the Dutch have been, even if they aren't threatening. Yeah, and I think it's particularly during the midfield. You've not seen a lot of the, the midfield players today from GB playing the forwards in. It is very difficult as a forward if, if you haven't got that option for you. You just seem to be running around trying to create space. And if the balls aren't coming, there's not an awful lot you can do. The good news for Great Britain hockey fans is that they're not in the same group as the Dutch at the Olympic Games in Rio, which uh, will be underway in uh, seven weeks' time. The opening ceremony is uh, six weeks and five days away. Townsend up against Cates, and here is Helen Richardson Walsh. Now Richardson Walsh with her head up. Good tackle from Boss, but it falls to Townsend, but she's crowded out by Van den Hervel and Devard, but then they've won it back again, Townsend to Ansley. Final seconds of the third quarter. Great Britain throw it forward, or they run the clock down? Well, Quick doesn't have much of a choice because Van den Hervel and Van Marlo have done well. Townsend driving at the at Powman and cleared by Ellen Herg and 
Well, they're not going to get a chance to take the free hit. That is the three-quarter time. Huta, and there's still no addition to the score. Just the one goal separates the two. The penalty corner by leader by Felton in the second quarter. And with 15 minutes to play, it's Netherlands 1, Great Britain 0. So, Sarah, just do England go all out and say, well, we've got to try something different to get the equaliser? I mean, do we lose 2-0 as opposed to 1-0 in order to get that goal? I think for me, as a coach and a player, you always want to go out and attack, you always want to try and score goals. I mean, there's no point to just defend, defend and, and, and try and get a draw from a game. You, you've got to go out there and, and give it your very best in terms of going forward. And for me, whether he... He starts putting people higher up the field and allowing them to stay there rather than always having to get back. Yes, that gives the other team space in which to play, but it's about getting players forward and, and working off each other and creating that space by running at different angles of attack. Well, Danny Kenny being very animated at what he wants for his team. Well, the intent is there, but it's easier said than done, isn't it? Well, you, you can't be suicidal against the Dutch because if you chuck too many players forward, they'll, they will rip you apart. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it, you know, the, the girls' intent will, will absolutely be there. It, it, playing the Dutch is no mean feat. The, the Dutch side have been number one for so many years now. They've established themselves and they are such a difficult team to play against. So just for me that's all and I'm sure the girls as well for Great Britain will just want to go out there and, and play with a bit more flair and excitement and go forward happy Father's Day this Aww. boy's little one along Cute. oh she looks like she's enjoying oopsie <laughs> dummy's out okay so 15 minutes of this one remaining can Great Britain find an equaliser dancing gets us underway to Townsend Tommy, you played in the uh, two-all draw in Rosario over four years ago, the Champions Trophy. What do you recall from that game? Yeah, I remember us being behind, actually, and I remember half-time Danny saying to us, you guys are just playing with fear, you, you wouldn't play like this against any other opposition. And whether it's a subconscious fact, you think, wow, we're playing the Dutch and, you know, they're the world's number one, it's going to be much more difficult. But you just have to play to process, you have to continue to do the right things. But, but equally, the Dutch are extremely good at closing space down, so you just have to be even better than you normally are. How did you get back into that one then? You're asking my memory now. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. I, be, I, I believe it was. Three two we good did. goals. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I believe it was what, with what Danny said. It kind of uplifted us to think, yeah, you know what? We can go out and attack. And I remember some of the midfield players just starting to open up and, and play the ball forward and attack. Attack with a mindset to go towards goal, not play back the whole time. Long corner which uh, De Hoda will take. Dirksen van den Hervel and Jonkers in! And that is not far wide. It's a long corner off Richardson Walsh, but Kelly Jonker within a whisker of doubling the lead. Yeah, and this is the jumping into space we spoke about earlier. As you can just see a lingering behind Ansley there and just choosing the moment to jump in front. And, and that's what she's so, so good at, Kelly Jonker, creating the space for herself to use. Captain's tackle, if ever there was one. And Kate Richardson Walsh. Mm, feisty in the circle, but you'd expect nothing less as Van den Hervel plays it in onto the foot of Cullen. It must be a penalty corner. The off umpire coming into that Fuente. Signaling to Claire. And no. So we don't need to go upstairs. A fourth. PC for the Dutch. Twice as many as their opponents. The power's just switched to the right hand castle, to Foda on the left. Will they run the option or will they go direct from the top of the circle? And it comes, it is Powman. What a stop that is. Oh no, it's wide of the mark, is it? Well, I thought Helen Richardson Walsh might have got a stick on it, but uh, it was off target from Powman. 
Danson. Battling Danson. Great work from Alex Danson. She's had nothing easy this match, Alex Danson, but then she uh, gets involved. Just clips the post, is it? Well, it wasn't too far away. Powell, Powell's face, away. yeah, she knows it's not too far away. Good running from Krista Cullen there, though, to, you know, be down the line, making herself big and forcing Powell, therefore, to, to find a tighter angle and, and doing so, getting it wide. Cullen to Webb, Webb into the circle. Here's Danson, can she get the shot away? It's a squeezed into the foot of Dirksen van den Herbel, is it? I was quite sure who's giving it away. I think they're going to go upstairs here. Yeah, it looked like the stick of Dirk van der Havel from up here in the commentary box. OK, we are going to go to Dino Willocks in the uh, in the truck. There she is. Dino, we are looking for a foot, please. Hi, Carolina. It's another little fellow looking for a foot in the, in the circle. Sure if it's that particular one. It might be a little bit. Yeah, I think that's the one they've gone Carolina, for. Carolina, yes. I have a decision for you. There is no foot in the circle. Okay. We Just start wait. with a free out. Okay. And Netherlands keep their wait, wait, wait. Well, The crowd wait, don't wait. seem to oh. like it, but I mean, it's absolutely the right decision. Yeah. And well, maybe it was the angle dancer was looking down at, but she was the one who wanted. You got a hand in the air. Yeah, no, I saw from you it was the stick from Dirk Sander Havel, and when actually she realised the umpire was saying it was her, she was like, mm, really? So, yeah, good good from the Dutch there to, to go to the video referral. Cullen. That's a nice ball from Cullen, and Townsend with some space now. And Marla comes across to try and uh, shut Townsend down, and she pops it inside, and they turn it over, and here goes leader by Velton. Velton under the shoulder to Van der Poels. Van der Poels tries to feed Velton again and Richardson Walsh gives Claire Adno a little look, say, so hasn't had a push on my back, but uh, the French umpire says no. Schernacker and Geffen. Here is Van Ass into the circle first time. Was that a push on the back of uh, Van der Poels? It's taken quickly by Great Britain. They're just trying to up the tempo here. Maybe the Hoda is there. Let's sit back. Little dink over the top. And uh, she'll go for a rest. Well, coming up next, it's the Trans-Tasman -Ta Derby. Australia up against New Zealand, the world number three Australia, the world number four New Zealand. And uh, New Zealand recently beat Australia in the final of the Invitational Tournament in Darwin, with two goals to nil, having been beaten in the round robin format. So it's going to be a really close encounter between the Hockey Roos and the Black Sticks a little later on in about 50 minutes time. Nice work from Van Ass and Sophie Bray forces a back in field. Van Geffen down the line. Velton awaits and Velton off a right leg. Here is Bray. Oh, wasn't red by McCallan. And here's a chance for Van Marla. Van Marla's into the circle on the reverse stick. Cullen does well, really well to get across as Van Marla was teeing it up. Free hit to Dutch, which Herg takes. Nick White. Large blow the whistle for a third party obstruction, and Great Britain have a free out. 
Quek up against Jonka, plays it back in field, and once again, the Great Britain team aren't on the same wavelength, and they've gifted possession back to the Dutch and Ellen Herg. Van Marla now. Van Marla drops it out to Van Marsaka. Villamine Boss. And Geffen. Van Ass with a little spin. And away from Jonka. It's a long corner. It's all very much down this right hand end, isn't it, Sarah? In this set. They want to refer it. The Dutch are referring. A foot in the circle. They've been pretty good on their referrals so far. Okay, Netherlands are looking for a foot in the circle. Thank you. Okay, let's have another look. Sam Quirk. Claire, I have a decision for you. There was a foot in the circle, penalty corner. Netherlands keep their referral. So, the fifth penalty corner for the Dutch. Sam Quirk's foot giving it to them. If Kid is getting on, there is Quack. Palman is there. Van Marsaka now at the top of the circle to the right, number 13. She scored two penalty corners in that European final to give the Dutch the 2 0 lead. Now, here it comes, and it's gone to Van Marsaka. And good running from the cloud. It's another penalty corner. Well, the cloud's saying no, but if she's convinced, then refer it. But Hinch is saying the cloud's getting involved with the Dutch here, but if she's so convinced it hit her stick, she needs to refer it. Yeah, then on to her leg. hard for her from the cloud because she's in the middle of it. Yeah, she's done really well to get out there on the top. She's, you know, really quick out there and, and blocking the massacre from, from having time at the top to get off the, the shot. Where's this one going to? Still Palman on the left and massacre on the right. And this time it goes to Palman. Goes low and finds the bottom corner. And, well, it's a game of numbers. If you give the Dutch that many penalty corners, then they will score into second penalty corner for the Dutch side. It's the fifth goal in the competition for Marcia Pau, and this time she has beaten Maddie Hinch low down to the keeper's right-hand side. And it's the Netherlands 2, Great Britain 0. Yeah, good deception from Powerman at the top. You see how long she's able to hold that on her stick this time. It looks like she's gone to right, and then the last minute just whipped it low, bottom left. But all of that coming from her wrist. Watch at the top, the strength in that, and the, the flick of the wrist to just get that low, bottom left. And there's some real power behind that as well. So, on the 53rd minute, or in the 53rd minute, Marcia Powerman makes it Netherlands 2, Great Britain 0. And uh, well, Danny Kerry's team are going to have to dig very, very deep now. They were really threatened in this second half. Yeah, I think for GB, the most important thing is trying to keep possession. They, they've really struggled with that in this game, particularly in the second half, just giving balls away back to the Dutch far too easily. They just need to keep the ball, play in 2v1s and start to work their way higher and higher up the field. Richardson Walsh under pressure from Van Marla. And then they give the ball away. It just hasn't clicked between the lines for Great Britain here today. As of yet, they've still got, what, just over seven minutes to try and find something happen. But look at the possession per quarter. And the quarter where they really need to attack, it's been their worst in terms of possession. Yeah, and half of that hasn't even come from the Dutch putting that much pressure on them. It, you know, a lot of the mistakes have come from GB just playing the ball back to the Dutch far too easily. They need, as Danny said in, in the halftime talk, to keep possession and play it to their teammate. Who's referred that one? Push the ball over the back line.
Well, well, they certainly give one in the first half for that, didn't they, when Van Heffen put it over the, the baseline. Here we go. Well, it's only going one way, this, isn't it? By swinging the stick that way, it is only going to go over the back line. It's Van Marla. So it's a long, correct. So and yeah. GB lose the referral. GB lose the referral and wait for my wait for my whistle, please. Well, wait. Great Britain don't get the nod. Yeah, interesting. I mean, once that's called in the first half, you would imagine then there's consistency throughout the game. So if that ball is being played off the baseline and it appears to be purposeful, as you say, Charlie, where else is that ball going to go? A real attacker's tackle, that one. Yeah, really, Russian tackle. That's the ball. They've got a penalty corner now for playing the ball away. Xander Vard. It's funny how discipline can play a part. Xander Vard, there's no need to play that away. No, these are the moments that the coaches harp on about all the time, because it absolutely kills the game. I mean, if that's 1-0 at the moment and you play that away, we've seen it, seen it in such big games happen and it just changes the game dramatically. Well, the goal here will make life interesting. Richardson Walsh and Krista Cullen. Top of the circle, that's Kate Richardson Walsh looking around over a left shoulder, number 11, Cullen 32. Georgie Twig with the injection. And it goes to Kate Richardson Walsh, who brings it in for the slap, the score is there, and quick thinking by Richardson Walsh as he swings round and hits the score on the foot, but it was all a little slow. Yeah, and good work from Vashore getting out there. Kate Richardson was going in for the slap across the goal, it looked like, but the score seeing that. But good work from Kate Richardson was to try and find a foot and get another penalty corner for a team then. Fourth penalty corner of the, of the game for Great Britain. It's come to Krista Cullen. It's broken down and they go for the deflection at the left hand post. Danson and Twig were there but uh, neither of them could apply the required touch. Yeah, ball coming in from Cullen, bit of miscommunication, I think. He's gone gone out far too wide. Danson's gone in for it. Nick White doing well to trap that, given that she's moving away from the goal, but yet yeah, just not the connection they would have hoped for. Oh dear, the chair pops up when you stand up. Richardson Walsh to Webb. Cullen first time up the line. Now Sophie Bray, who's been a little quiet, gets nothing for running into Villamine Boss. Van Marla, Vanden Hervel trying to help her teammate on the left, but Van Marla into the circle all alone. Another beautifully balanced save from Maddie Hinch. Yeah, good way from Van Mala to get the shot off. Kate Richardson was trying to close her, but yeah, Van Mala actually has a bit behind her. She goes to hit that. She's moving at some speed there to try and get that off. But we saw with the Argentinians this morning, they, they certainly were able to do that at pace. It's another textbook save from Hinch. She makes it look so easy, doesn't she? Yeah, she's really calm and collected, really calm and collected. And I think in the team, having her behind you must give you so much, so much confidence that you think, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to be OK. I Great need to do my job. Great Britain women seem to produce a lot of good goalkeepers. Always, absolutely always. Uh, I mean, it, it's incredible. Even at home nation level, you've got always good goalkeepers. And yeah, real testament to, to Maddie Hinch and you know the, the time she's been trying to get into the squad. And, and now she's certainly established herself in doing that. She's absolutely phenomenal. So, so agile. Just one circle penetration for Great Britain in this final quarter. Can't win a game or draw a game with just that. Belton, Belton can't believe she has <laughs> got the <laughs> decision. Did seem to bounce up into Townsend's body. Well, the Dutch have got the ball now on that far side as Anthony fails to keep it in play. That 
You've got to stop the ball. Well, they've been consistent with that, that's for sure. Yep. Webb. Okay, Richardson Walsh. Yeah, GB doing well at the moment, getting the likes of Sam Quirk and Georgie Twig really wide, starting to stretch the Netherlands so they can try and put those balls through into those, those channels in the inside. There's no cutting edge for Great Britain today. And very unlikely you're going to get that pass away against the Dutch. Playing it across the park onto their open side stick. Although well, that was taken on the reverse, but... Richardson Walsh. And there are your shots per quarter. Berkshire van den Hervel. Warning it up for Jonker. No, Jonker can't get that. Well, the Dutch are going to end up with two wins from their first two games. And uh, they're usually always very good in pool play, aren't they? They usually win most of them. Yeah, they start to really establish themselves and, and gain momentum as the tournament goes on. But they, they certainly stamped their authority on the game against New Zealand yesterday and, and set their stall out for what they're hoping during this tournament. Yeah, it's just when it comes to the knockout games, they, mm. they just, perhaps without that safety net of another pool game, they, they become a little tentative. But that's when they seem to lose most of their games. But it's testament how good they are that they get into those knockout games. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, they've become accustomed to, uh, to winning games. So it's a bit of a shock of the system to them if they lose those games like they did, as you mentioned earlier, with England in the Europeans' year at Lee Valley. Well, Great Britain fought back twice against Argentina yesterday. They're going to be unable to fight back against the world number one side. Boss inside the wow. final 45 seconds. Jonker Van Mahler is there to be a third goal here for the Dutch. Van Mahler driving to the circle, driving to the line. Richardson Walsh with a good tackle. Unsworth clears to Owsley. What uh, a pick from Jonker, you know. What a piece of skill to turn and get that lift to get past the player. Owsley, have to go herself, just overruns it. Maybe De Herder plays it to this Van den Hervel, and here is Ellen Herg. Free hit to players in white and there's going to be no rush from Ellen Herg. There is the final hooter and the Dutch make it two wins from two and that lady there, Marcia Powman, on the score sheet once again, getting the second from a penalty corner after the lead of Iveltin had tipped in a variation in the first half. The Dutch, though, dominant throughout pretty much and really kept the Great Britain attackers on a very tight leash. And while well, they really have stamped their authority on this 2016 Women's Champions Trophy, have the Dutch, the Great Britain. Well, they played the top two teams in the world and have taken one point from a possible sixth. Their competition still very much alive. The top two sides, remember, will go into the gold medal match. Alison Allen is all smiles. And, uh, she will prepare for her game against the USA on Tuesday. Final score here, Netherlands 2, Great Britain 0.